my parents understand like the same amount as the general public that's not in music they all understand the same thing they're right. it's like the movie version of how you like get famous and stuff it's like oh there's a guy sitting in the back of the bar and like watching this band and then it's like everyone thinks that it's just like one person you know yeah i'm adam and i appreciate you doing this today yeah thanks for having me of course uh this is about you and your journey in music and uh we'll talk about the the album awesome sounds good Sweet. So, uh, first off, where were you born and raised? Uh, Dighton, Massachusetts, which is like southeastern Massachusetts, really close to Rhode Island. Okay. What was it like uh, up there? Snowy? Tiny, tiny uh, country town. Winters were long. Uh, my dad actually built the house I grew up in. It was a log cabin Whoa. in the woods. Yeah. So, I'm like a country bumpkin. Um, That's amazing. At heart, yeah. <laughs> so oh, I grew up, wow. grew up uh, riding dirt bikes, uh, you know, playing in the snow, just like all the woods activities. That's really um, cool. Wow. So he built that house. So did he build it before you were born, or were you yeah. guys somewhere and then he built it and he moved in there? No. Well, so my whole Italian side of my family lives in within like a mile of each other. Oh, and I love that. That's awesome. My my dad grew up in the house uh, next door to the house he built. So he basically took the land next door, built a house, and then the whole family was just like my great grandmother, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, everyone was all like on the same street. <laughs> That's really cool. So you had a yeah. your tight knit family there. Big, loud family. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So everyone was always around, which was cool and great for like, my parents, like when I grew up, could go on dates and stuff because we would just go next door. Right. So I know. Nice. I have two kids, and um, my we, I, I'm from my wife and I are from San Diego, and we recently moved to Nashville about two years ago. And oh, nice. Our uh, my in laws moved out here, and so it was like when they moved here, it was like you know, finally had the date nights back. To like you know, yeah. But um, they ha are back in San Diego this week. So then last night we had somewhere to be. So it was like we had a good babysitter. It was a whole thing. But not it's it's, it's, it, it's so much nicer to have the family here to be like, hey, <laughs> can you yeah. do this? Can you watch the kids? Yeah, it takes great. a village. Oh, that's yeah. From what I've sure. heard. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> you heard correct. Yeah. Um, that's amazing, though. What about uh, anyone in your extended family or anyone you there in the music or uh, musical or how'd you get into music so my my brother and I are both musicians um oh, right. ni neither of my parents um but my mom I think my parents could tell that I wasn't interested in school very very early um and at like in kindergarten uh I got put in classical piano lessons and then I stayed in classical lessons and till I was 14. Um, and then I hit puberty and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and started playing guitar and writing songs and stuff, but like music. Oh, but it was wasn't my... fuck this to, to music. It was just fuck this to the classical piano. Just the classical, just the classical music Got was my it. thing though. Like for throughout like my elementary school talent shows, I would be like accompanying people singing like show tunes and stuff like oh, it was fun. like it was always my thing I did not give a crap about school ever um and yeah it was that was kind of my thing and then my brother picked it up later like when he was a teenager he started playing guitar and he was amazing immediately and I was <laughs> like great is um, he older or younger he's exactly a year older on the same day on no Valentine's way. Day yeah that's a trip wow we're, we're irish twins i think that's what they call it but yeah we were yeah. born both both born on valentine's day a exactly year exactly a year apart that yeah. is wild yeah and i was early and he was late so it's kind it of it was funny. meant to be that's it was crazy. meant to be that yeah really cool. <laughs> um so were you close growing up you and your brother Super close. We're still super close. Um, super uh, similar and opposite in 
are like my brother is like a a he's in a serious Tom Petty cover band uh-huh. where he's like playing like theaters doing that and no like, way yeah like he's killing it uh but like our music couldn't be more different you know he's right. kind of on the country folk land which I love country and folk and I think some of that kind of funnels into my taste too um but he is like very much in that world so that's amazing so did yeah. you like growing up were you would you play with each other I mean it's like jam with each other and stuff yeah we were playing when we were 14 and 15 like when we both started performing mm-hmm. we were playing like three or four open mics a week in all wow. over all over mass all over rhode island uh we were obsessed with it and we were lucky that our parents were like well we're just glad that they're doing this after school and not you know like doing drugs and stuff so right. it was uh yeah it, we were obsessed with it that's all we did we were playing blues bars like we would go to blues jams and i would get up and like play keys with like 80 year old dudes and like <laughs> That was it. That was like our whole our whole high school experience was like four nights a week playing out. That's amazing. Were you writing songs at that point too, or no? Just jumping yeah, up on stage. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I put out my first album uh, under my my birth name is Sarah Borello, and I put my first album out when I was sixteen uh, in high school, and I was just like peddling them at people's lockers and like. <laughs> I would be the acoustic opener for the hardcore shows at the Legion halls because I was, I was like a screamer and I was like loud. So they would, they would book me to open for hardcore bands. And I was obsessed with that scene. Uh, I loved the energy. I loved that. Like someone was going to like spit in your face and like (laughs) punch you. And like, there was nothing you could do. And that was fun. Uh, But that was like where I got my start was like, giving people CDs in high school and playing Legion shows and stuff like wow. that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You're the person that would walk up with the disc man and like the one earbud. You're like, Hey, uh- what's up? <laughs> no, I wasn't that cool. I was like, like, do you want it? And they're like, uh, you're like, here's a CD. And then they take it and you're like, okay, it's five bucks. I mean, Those are my I favorite would, people. <laughs> I, was char- I was charging 10 bucks, oh, but damn, I, wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't cool about it. I was just like, I worked very hard on this. Please, <laughs> please buy it. <laughs> That's a cooler approach, I think. Then, oh, you're holding yeah. it in your hand now? Okay, now you owe me five bucks. Yeah, it was sweet. It was fun. And like, I actually got to record for the first time and like make the album because one of the drummers from one of the hardcore bands I opened for saw me and he had just built a home studio. He was in my high, my high school too. They were all oh, seniors. Wow. Yeah, okay. so I was a freshman. He was a senior and he was like, I want to record you. And that was just like how everything started. Okay. So then you recorded this album that you put out and you were in shout freshman out year. To, shout out to Jay DeLuca uh, for recording that album. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still was, doing music and recording? I'm curious. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Honestly, I have not talked to him in a long time. You're but like, I hope- then he produced the new Lady Gaga yeah. record. You're I like, mean, oh. <laughs> who knows? But he... He was uh, very kind and uh, supportive. But yeah, my my first album was called Therapy, okay. um, which was hilarious because I, you know, I was I was 14. I was like in the throes of puberty and I got my heart broken for the first time. And the whole album is about the same dude. It's uh, okay. just it's very it's very Taylor Swifty. Uh, I love Taylor Swift. Okay, well then you would love it. <laughs> but like in my family still is like you got to write another album like therapy cuz it's like very easy for them to listen to, you know, compared yeah. to what I'm ta- all the things I'm talking about now are a bit more. <laughs> I think it's a, a little harder to swallow. <laughs> right, right. Wow, well, that's that's cool that your family was supportive too in this in saying like oh these are great songs, like this is awesome that you were yeah. able to, you know, kind of express your feelings about this this person and write yeah. in a song and have your family, you know, support it. They were always uh, so supportive um, and like very honest too. Like w- we would play the same open mic every Thursday night and like they would tell us how they felt about like if I brought a new song, like I would know how my dad felt about it. And like 
maybe I would never play it again. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. But it was like, it, they were always like looking out for us and like pushing us to play. And like, you know, it was, it was great. I'm very, very fortunate that they encouraged it and mm -hmm. for both of us, because neither of us, I mean, both of us are very smart. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not, I guess my brother is more academic than me. He was like fourth in the class or something. I don't even know what number I was, but he, <laughs> you know, he was better at school, but like, I never had any interest in anything like that. And they knew, they knew that. And they still let me do, uh, be smart and flourish in my own lane, which yeah, is Yeah, that's great. amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. I have support it because a lot of families, you know, you're, they're like, okay, that's a cool hobby. I've said this before, yeah. like, I saw this meme that was like, it, it was so good. It's a kid telling his dad, it said, hey, dad, I want to be a musician when I grow up. And the, the response the guy gives is, you can't be both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was I like... mean, it's kind of <laughs> true, honestly. Like, that is true. Yep. Yeah, I was just dying. I'm like, that's just so Keeps funny. You Keeps you young. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's definitely, like, very misunderstood, too. Like, it's such a... Like my parents understand like the same amount as the general public that's not in music. They all understand the same thing. They're right. it's like the movie version of how you like get famous and stuff. It's like, oh, there's a guy sitting in the back of the bar and like watching this band. And then it's like everyone thinks that it's just like one person, you know, or right. like you just need your big break. And uh -huh. We all know that it's like years and years and years of grinding and yeah. And if you get the, <laughs> if you get that big break, like, does it, how long is it la You know, is it just, yeah, there it was and there went, you know what I mean? And do you owe them millions of dollars? Like, Probably. <laughs> like what's the deal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's overhead so, for this. <laughs> this yeah. Good success. Which um, like, I think it's, it does, it does feel frustrating sometimes to try to like explain myself to people from back home and like what mm -hmm. I'm still doing, you know? Cause they'll be like, you still doing the music thing? Like people I went to high school and stuff. Oh yeah. And I'm like, you know, I wish I could just say no, but. <laughs> oh, I have, I. <laughs> Here we I, are. I, I was on the radio for 17 years before I did. I started while well, I was doing the podcast was towards wow. the radio thing. But so when, the same thing for people. So you still like, like it was like, like I was doing some hobby. I'm like, I right. get it, but it's like, no, <laughs> like, I know. I know. Yes, I am I still doing that. Okay, <laughs> it's it's a career. It's like right. a long term, long term thing. Like the same as going to med school. Just like different. Right. We're doing different healing. You know, like we're. No, it's oh, a I long, like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because I think about all the time how like when you look back in history, how artists were treated like basically like clergy like they were right up there with like the closest you could get to divine and right. then over time something happened where like they got put down here and it's like no artists shouldn't get paid music should be free like you know that's not a real job mm -hmm. and I don't know what happened in between like us being royalty and then <laughs> becoming like a joke to people but like right. It's weird. It's it's hard to explain to people. No, hundred percent. And it's what what's also really interesting to me is like the amount of work, like musicians and artists put into what they're doing into their craft, mm -hmm. is probably tenfold to someone that's like works at some corporate company that they go in from nine to five and then they just oh. shut off when they get home. Oh, like, yet you know <laughs> people that are doing music or other creative outlets are spending you know so there's no many shut hours. off there's no shut off it's just that all the time all the time all the time and then like, in hopes of some sort of you know lucrative way of living right. versus like yeah mm -hmm. it's not really a hobby if that's all you're doing all the time and yeah anyway that pisses yeah. me off when people think that <laughs> like i just released an album and i've already had people like commenting what's next like oh what we need more music i'm like you're like, I just put out a whole album. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. It's okay, crazy. so what, you're in LA now? Is that what it, 
I yes. Said. Okay. Yeah, I'm in LA. I've been here for six years. Okay. So what takes you from Mass to Los Angeles? <laughs> um, I was doing some sync work for uh the one of the members of Duran Duran uh was managed by the same guy I was working with. He was sort of my manager, you know how that goes. Um and I was basically working with Duran Duran on these songs for like six months from Boston and like sending them demos and stuff and like basically composing uh, and singing really spooky cinematic versions of their songs for their publishing company. And of Duran Duran songs? Yeah. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. Well, so it was Duran Duran. From Boston, were you going to Berkeley or something like that or no? No, I was actually, I went to Mass Art. Um, oh, okay for school and then this was actually after I graduated uh I ended up getting this I was doing this photo shoot with this photographer who knew this manager and it was like one of those things where it was like mm -hmm. all of a sudden I got a phone call it was like I'm sitting here with Duran Duran and they love your voice and they want you to record this blah 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 so I was like okay um wow. so I kind of put my stuff on hold for a long time and focused on making these demos from my bedroom in my apartment in Boston and eventually they were like okay this feels good we're gonna fly you out so they flew me to LA and I ended up working out of uh what's his name Paul something Paul Allen he was like the CEO of Microsoft or something it was his okay. mansion and it was like the oh, ultimate not a bad like, gig I mean coming from country bumpkin to Boston and then recording in a mansion I was like oh I'm moving here you know right right it was like oh I'm on the hill and like you know <laughs> I, I thought I was the shit um and then that opportunity ended up completely falling through and I spent so much time on it and uh ultimately it was like it was the thing that got me to move to LA um none of it panned out but I was like after that I was like holy crap like now I'm in LA and I like I thought I had all this stuff going on and now I have to start over. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I that was just the beginning was like basically Duran Duran. <laughs> like Duran Duran, uh the member actually Warren, he was in Zappa and Missing Persons. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we did some Z uh missing person songs too. Um, but wow. it was a yeah, it was a very weird way to get here, but that was why I moved here originally. So did any of those songs do anything? Like, I mean, did they send yeah. you like a list? Like, okay, you're going to do these five Duran Duran songs. And then I mean, to pitch this... those to yep. uh, like sync companies because they it's cheaper for them to buy that version than the actual recorded, you know, the original, so to speak. Well, it was like, I don't know if that's, I'm not sure what their angle was because I didn't get paid very much. Um, okay. And it was a lot of time and effort on my part, but it was like, uh, basically they, we finished the songs and then I think they just never got mastered or mixed. They were just sitting on their hands with them huh. and their sync company that they were working with asked for one of them. And it would have been like a life-changing sync for me. It was like the song costs like a hundred grand to use or something. And mm -hmm. like, I would have gotten 25% of that if we wow. got it. Yeah. And it was my voice and it was like a big thing. It was like Grey's Anatomy or some shit. Oh, wow. And I was like, this could change my life. And they just and never. That, they that show is changing lives for artists, to be honest. I know. Such it a hit maker has show. been forever. Yeah. Forever. It's crazy. Yeah. So basically, I like got a phone call. That was like, I think we got like this big sink. And then like 20 minutes later, they're like, oh yeah, they, we lost it because it wasn't finished. And I was like, I did all this work and like flew to LA and did all this stuff to like be ready for this moment. And then a bunch of dudes that are already rich and don't need the money dropped the ball. So oh, I was, wow. Yeah. That's that was crushing. like, that was the closest it ever got. And then after that, it just all like none of it materialized because I think that their relationship with their, I don't even know what happened 
legally or something something went down and they basically were like we're not using anything we did so i was like all right i guess i have to do my own thing now (laughs) and so they just like good luck and then you are what are you writing your own songs during this whole period or no or or Um, just kind of pause to do that that was i i was still writing um and i was still like performing my own shit but i did oh, definitely can. like i definitely was putting all my eggs in that basket because i was young i was right i mean naive I, most people would right i mean you're working with people right. that are in the industry legit artists mm-hmm. that have long long careers and a bunch of hits mm-hmm. and they want to work with you and then you're like well this should pan out and then yeah but I like we didn't you get know, enough time. We're not good. We're not going to finish. It was a learning yeah. experience. <laughs> and it's For like her. there's a whole there's like a whole uh, there's a whole faction of men in the valley that are or in the hills. They're like all they're all sprinkled about. But like they are vampires and they find young artists to like, you know, and I was just one of those people. I got, got subbed in. I got bit, whatever. It it's, happens. I'm killing it now. It right. Doesn't matter. I hope that they still follow me. <laughs> I hope they do too. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's all good. But it was definitely like that's why I'm here originally. Right. And then from from that moment, now it's you're probably defeated. You're like, oh my gosh, that was a, all my time and my effort. It all went to this thing, and then that you know didn't work out. What do you mm-hmm. end up doing? Are you like, okay, I should focus on my own stuff at this point and try to see yeah. what I can do here in LA. I actually, like, I think it was like the, maybe the same day I wrote the song up that's on my album oh, about, wow. about that situation. It was no like, way. yeah, that was the first song I wrote on the album. Uh, and it was just about being basically, they were sitting around talking about how it wasn't going to happen and then how I needed to like figure out how I was going to do my thing um and it was just like oh you guys aren't going to help me no one's going to help me and I just moved here and I don't know anyone and you know but then I was like screw you I'm going to do it because I did it back east if I can do it there I can do it here Mm -hmm. um but yeah I started writing that was it like after that I just started writing and playing like as many shows, as many songwriter nights as I could. Um, I was so social, which I now it takes me a lot to like <laughs> go out anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I started meeting people in the community and playing, you know, the solo acoustic nights and doing that and writing. I just started writing a lot. Okay. And then up became a big song for you right that was that the one that got first got played by k-rock yeah okay. yeah that was like that's been the song that's doing the best so far um, yeah so i was super i just like i wanted to get so big that they have to hear it mm-hmm. and and that's a good way to do it i mean k-rock right. is a legend station i know um, i was so pumped when they got on k-rock i was like and they played it twice i think i was like yes Oh, cool. Oh, Do you remember was... hearing it? Do you hear it? Yeah. On the oh, yeah. We got okay. the, we got in the car and I love blasted that. it. Yeah. I did. Radio, like I said earlier, I did radio for a long time. And those moments were like my favorite thing to hear when an artist say that, because nowadays I don't know if it's that big of a. I had it last night. Thing. I had um, my song Saltine Cracker Girl played on 88.5 last night. Oh, so really? Is that we... KLOS? No, it's uh, uh, SoCal Sound. It yeah. was the. It was what the Buzz it? Band's Buzz Band okay. show put it on there. And like I love radio. So I like that's I awesome. Turned it on, blasted it. We were dancing in the living room. Like it's that's like rad. those little things that we can still celebrate, like as an indie artist. It's like, yeah, you take that as a win, even though people are listening to Spotify most of the time. It's like it's still it's happening, you know? Yeah, no, I know. Exactly. I think that's so cool that you uh that you got played on that station. That's yeah, the, uh, not- that. Oh, I think. Wait a second. Okay, I know the guy that programs that station. Is that the Northridge? Is it Northridge? Uh, KCN or KCSN? Me- I think. I think it's the. I think that's yeah. Northridge. Um, I was like, why does this look familiar? Yeah, my so- a buddy I worked with in radio in San Diego. He uh, is the guy. 
for that. Right okay. Now. Yeah. It's you know Mookie? Mookie Betts? No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, his no, name I is don't. Mookie. That's his radio name. Oh, cool. Okay. okay. No, He's I... like the guy that runs that, that station. So I figured. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, they played they played that song and they played Los Angeles last week. So amazing. Like, lots of love to them. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, great. he does six to ten PM. I'm looking on their website now. Cool. I think he programs the station. Um yeah, anyway. I think I think Kevin <laughs> Kevin Bronson was the one that it was the Buzz Bands show that's from ten to eleven. Okay. And that's they're the ones that have been playing it, I think. That's awesome. So, yeah. Pumps. You gotta be happy yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool that you you know, and think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah, that's rad. So, um, well, I did see, so this album was what, something that kind of came, a lot of the songs came out of the pandemic. Is that what I read? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Can you the tell majority. Me about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, basically pandemic starts, um, and I don't know what to do as many artists are kind of just like, what the hell? I can't play shows. Like, Mm -hmm. can't do anything and I ended up um moving in with my now husband uh two I moved in with him two weeks after the city shut down uh we had just gotten together and he was like go get your shit or we're not gonna see each other <laughs> so I moved in and it worked out for us thank god but That's uh awesome. I I moved in here and he was like, you need to get like a place where you can write. Cause I couldn't write here. He was working all day front remotely. And it's mm -hmm. like, I had no space to sing or do anything creative. And I ended up because I wasn't paying the rent anymore at my old place. I ended up getting a studio downtown and it's like my art studio. It's where we rehearse every week. It's got like multiple like pianos and just shit everywhere. It's awesome. And I started writing, trying to write a song every day. Mm -hmm. um, most of it was shit, obviously. But I ended up with some, about like 17 songs that I like really liked. And they all felt like they were coming from the same universe. Um, and I was like, I think I have an album. You know, I was kind of like, I feel like, like there were two songs I'd written previously, which were up and Los Angeles that I was like, these are part of the story of the rest of this. Um, mm. Cause a lot of it is me processing 2018 and 19, which were like the worst years of my life. Um, and then like kind of getting out of that and finding love for myself and love in my life that was healthy. Mm. And uh, so it's like, that's basically the whole story. Um, and he i was showing him all my demos and he was like yeah you sh you should make an album so uh that was kind of like how i wrote it it was just out of writing a lot mm -hmm. um and having feeling like i had no purpose if i wasn't writing it was like my 9 to 5 during the pandemic i was like well if i'm just sitting around watching documentaries like you know, what, what am yeah. I supposed to do? Right. Um, besides like, you know, working, I had like a shitty job working. Uh, I was an executive assistant for a celebrity security company. <laughs> so it was cool. like, we did like security for celebrity homes and oh wow, yeah, it was, I hated it. Um, I don't, I don't like data entry. I'm dyslexic. It's very difficult oh, so, for me. So am I. It's bad. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's my personal hell. Spreadsheets, like, I can't. Yeah, can't my wife it. is like, that's like her love is spreadsheets. And Same, I, yeah. I, 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 it's, yeah, I just get, yeah, my dyslexic ADHD brain is just like, gets so overwhelmed. I'm like, I can't even handle like looking at this. Everything moves. Everything <laughs> yeah, is switching numbers, addresses. Everything's wrong. Oh, yeah, it's all I was, over the place. I was terrible at my job. <laughs> uh, well, but, that's, yeah. At least a record came out of it. Um, I know. <laughs> I was. That's cool that your your now husband was so supportive of it instead of being like, yeah, you know, let's. Uh, I mean, to 
have somebody that tells you i mean a lot like your parents did support yeah. you from your music to say like you have an album here you should write an album yeah i mean he he before we were together we were friends for years and he was like front row at every show oh, screaming amazing. inviting people uh you know he has always been like a huge supporter and he believes in me more than i believe in myself so it's been like super helpful to have him kind of cheerleading me on through the process. Cause you know how it is. It's like a million steps mm -hmm. each thing. So it's been, yeah, he's been an angel through the process. That's great. And, and some of the songs are probably, you know, some of the songs aren't kind <laughs> and like, <laughs> and like easy for him probably to listen to it, but he's like receptive and respectful and great. Yeah, that's a, I was going to say the the subject matter of the record, like you said earlier, is, is quite a bit different. It sounds like at least from the high school therapy album, I mean, taking on yeah. much bigger, yes, bigger uh, topics. Uh, yeah. I did see that you mentioned something about uh, addiction. I, I have I am in treatment and recovery for addiction. Um, mm -hmm. So I was curious if that's like a part of the, your story as well. Um, not that you don't have to get into it at all. If you oh, yeah, it. no, that's fine. Um, I am actually not in recovery. I struggled with, uh, I was smoking a pack a day and drinking every day oh, there for go. about two years. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also using people and in that way. Okay. And I, I actually came, came out of it in a really strange, natural kind of cold turkey way. Mm -hmm. um which i never expected but i uh yeah i got really healthy when i moved in here into That's this great. place and it was kind of like i i just stopped smoking like ra randomly one day i like got over a cold and then i just stopped buying them and it was weird it was very strange unplanned um the but drinking hey, that's great yeah it was great the drinking was definitely something like it does i was with someone who was an addict for eight years uh -huh. and that behavior as you know it like becomes very normal um if you don't pay attention and i became like you know without noticing i was drinking a lot very often and yeah. that just baseline it was just like normal to have a six pack on a weeknight and like go to bed and like it was easier to sleep if I was drunk, you know, things like that, that just you're saying them and, and you're like, whatever, like it doesn't matter. Um, but then when I was alone, it got really bad because mm -hmm. there was no one there to be like, hey, chill out. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's kind of what it was. It's interesting that you, you have that you kind of come from the like where my wife's side was, where it was like she would partake you know drinking and stuff with me and then it came to a point where it was like uh like this is going like Dr the charade is all, you know yeah why are we continuing with this like okay and then it's like yeah yeah it's uh, just awful it's so hard and it's uh i actually have a lot of experience i'm close to a lot of people in recovery um mm -hmm. and i also like for some reason have been very close to a lot of people who are still struggling um, and I've lost a lot of people. So it's been something that's been pervasive throughout my life in a, not with my family, which is so strange. Cause I feel like that's kind of usually where it stems for people, mm -hmm. but like outside of my family, it's, it's so uh, prevalent in my life. Um, not as much anymore. Cause I think being in your thirties, everyone's kind of like, all right. <laughs> Yeah. you know they're, they're trying to hang to up the cleats <laughs> or, or they're going to a that. That meeting <laughs> i love that hang up the cleats that's, i'm gonna steal that that's really good it's all you uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like everyone's kind of like woken up to the things that they're now processing and uh yeah like i know a lot of people that are doing some really hard work on themselves and that's inspiring and it's definitely been uh yeah it's definitely a part of my story and mm -hmm. whether it's me or someone else that i love 
it's it's part of the story yeah that's well that's an incredible that you're able to you know kind of get yourself out of that and and land in the relationship you're in now and you have mm-hmm. an album to show for it all and um that's yeah you, the successes you're having are great i mean you're getting thank you play and um the, i saw that you have it on a vinyl which is cool um, yeah did a huge south by southwest show i saw some uh stuff on instagram from yeah that was amazing we, we did that uh, the week before my album release show which was two nights ago we had four shows at south by and wow it was incredible like every show we our expectations were like pretty well managed we were like south by is a shit show like mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna see what happens but it was fantastic we had we had four great shows so very yeah. happy with how that went and then saturday night at the moroccan uh was awesome it was yeah we we've been we had a really good march march was march was great that's so cool are you doing like a tour outside of la to support the album or are you working on that that's the plan working on it haven't announced anything yet but we're in the process right now of working on that amazing well thank you so much for for hanging out and chatting with me today i appreciate it yeah thanks for having me it's great i have one more quick question before i let you go i want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists whoa let's see i guess my biggest and this is me projecting because i still have to take this advice is uh to remember that you are the only you and that whatever you bring to the table uh is great and special because you're making it um and yeah usually the people in the room that you walk into need you to be there so I guess that's another thing that's easy to forget when you're like an artist and you walk into a session or something and it's like, you feel like, Oh, well, everyone's doing me a favor, but like they can't do it without you. So I guess those are the two things I would say. 